So it feels like we've been talking about the Apple VR headset for years, but Minchiko does finally believe we could see this headset launch in 2023, and specifically at a Jan event. Now, yes, I know some of you guys might be wondering, Apple really does not have many Jan events, right? Well, yes, actually they have in the past for milestone products like the iPhone, for example. So this very much being the next big thing from Apple does deserve a Jan event. Now, Quo does give us a ton of details regarding this product in this new report. He begins by saying it's going to be a game changer for the AR and VR market, mainly because this is going to be a lot more immersive than the competition, but also this headset should boost demand for gaming and multimedia and Payment services to the VR format. Quo also says that Apple has no plans to join the metaverse, but he does believe that many rivals are going to copy this headset once it finally launches. And yeah, that makes sense to be honest because whenever Apple gives us a new product, many other companies follow suit. And so I do think Quo's claims are legit. Apple will be a big player in the VR market and they're going to make this tech more accessible to consumers. And by accessible, I don't mean price-wise because this is still going to be very expensive, but I do think this is going to be a lot more easy and friendlier to use than other products. Also, many have told us the VR and AR elements of this headset are going to be very lifelike and should be a lot better than what's available on the market. And I think that's a key thing because right now with the metaverse and whatever Facebook is doing, it's really quite limited. And so improving the animations and making everything more lifelike and more realistic is really going to help with adoption for this headset. Since even right now with Animojis on the iPhone, it doesn't always get your face expressions perfectly, so I do hope the Apple headset does fix this. And I think there's a very good chance at it fixing it because it's rumored to have two 4K micro LED displays, 15 cameras, two main chips, one of them being the M1 Pro chip, Wi-Fi 6C eye tracking, object tracking, and also hand gesture controls. And yeah, that's going to be another big part of the success, I think, of this headset, because unlike the competition, this will use eye tracking and hand gestures, which should be more natural to use than a remote, like most other headsets. So yeah, all this news sounds very exciting, but to be honest, I just want to see the headsets. We've been hearing that it's ready for release for quite a while, so I do hope Quo is right about this, and we do see a 2023 Jan release. Really, the only con with this headset is the price, because Quo once again says it's going to be $3,000, that is still ludicrous to me, but of course, if it offers a quality experience and is much better than the competition, then I guess Apple can justify that price. Now, of course, for those worried about the high price of this headset, Quo in another report does tell us we should see a light version of the second gen headset launch in 2025 with a lower price. So yeah, much like we have an iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, there's going to be two variants, a base version, and then a Pro version that's going to succeed the first gen headset with a high starting price. Now, of course, we're unsure what's going to be different between these two headsets. I'm assuming the materials of the headset could be cheaper, but also the hardware inside, like the display and the chip, could be worse. However, I'm not too concerned about that. As long as this is relatively affordable, maybe $1,000 or even less, then yeah, the weaker hardware is not a massive issue. In fact, ideally, I would love to see Apple match the Quest 2 pricing, but of course, Apple's hardware has always been more expensive than the competition, so I would not be surprised if this cheaper headset is still more expensive than the Quest. However, Apple can make up for the higher price through, of course, the experience, and we've been hearing a ton of good things regarding the first-gen headsets, so of course with the second-gen headsets, I'm sure the experience is going to be even better even with the cheaper headset. And by the way, the cheaper headset Quo refers to is not the AR glasses, that's also been heavily rumoured, that's also going to be relatively accessible, but that's a different product, since that's AR only and of course is used when out and about, whereas this should be for indoor use and gives you access to both AR and VR. Anyways, it's time for the peep show where I, of course, answer your questions, doubts, and statements in the comments. 
Sir Richard Andrews says there should be a workout game dance game Beat Saber clone that has access to their music service and also mentions VR music videos, interviews with artists and also movie trailers. And yeah, I totally see Apple doing this. Apple already has Apple Music and Apple TV Plus. And in fact, there are rumors John Favreau is developing a documentary that's going to be in VR about dinosaurs that should be on Apple TV Plus. So clearly, Apple's thinking about this. But yes, VR trailers, VR TV shows, VR movies, also maybe VR music videos. I can see all of that fitting into the main features of this headset. Anyways, Brian R says, Ive is still involved with the design nice. Now I'm actually quite sad Ive is still involved with this because while I do think he's a very great designer and he's given us some very wonderful looking products, as of late, he has been taking the form over function routes. For example, the iPhone 6 being too thin, and also the butterfly keyboard and the lack of ports on the older MacBook Pros. So yes, I'm kinda worried he's gonna do the same with this headset. And yeah, there was a rumor that I covered where Johnny did not want the battery to be built into the headset. I thought that would be better because that would allow you to swap batteries out and play with this headset for hours, but Johnny believes this should have a wire going through it instead, and I'm not sure how that's going to shape out. Since I do feel a wire could be restrictive, especially since you do move quite a lot when using VR headsets, so I'm hoping that Apple's engineers do go against Johnny's beliefs. Now, Inceptional believes without proper controllers, this thing is not going to be suited for gaming because it's going to be very hard to play games with hand gestures. And yeah, I do agree with that for the most part. And so I can see Apple selling separate accessories. But to interact with the UI for other features, I do think hand gestures are going to be more natural. Anyways, let me know in the comments below, guys. Are you excited for this VR headset? Make sure to like and subscribe. And on that note, see ya peeps.